So how good does it sound to be able to create your dream website with zero code using the power of AI and have an incredibly fast website? Well, that's what Framer and their new feature, the AI option, kind of promises us. So once you've signed up for your free account or if you have a paid account, you can kind of log into your dashboard and inside there, we can do a couple of different things. There's an onboarding wizard if you want to check that out, which I would recommend you do, but I've already gone through that. So let's say I want to start with the AI option. So let's choose to start with AI. So this is what you're going to start off with. And this is not an exhaustive tutorial on how to use Framer. Like I say, if you want more content on Framer, let me know in the comment section. But let's go ahead and say, let's start with AI. This is then going to ask us to give it a prompt, the kind of thing we're used to doing anyway with any kind of AI tools, ChatGPT, Midjourney, all those things. Now, be as descriptive as possible for what you're actually looking for to give you the best chance of getting a good starting point. You can see it's flashing up with a couple of examples that you can use to get started and get a feel for what they expect. But take your time, craft your prompt, and you're going to have a decent starting point to work from. So I've gone ahead, crafted my prompt. Let's now say we're going to start. This is then going to create three different variations. We're going to have our desktop variation, our tablet, and our mobile. So we have everything we need to get started. And as you can see, as we go through, it's now starting to create and craft that starting point. We have control over every aspect of this. We can just use this as a starting point to get inspiration, and then we can tweak and refine it. So let's let it go ahead, do its work. And as you can see, everything is being kind of done in real time. The AI content for the text, the colors, the palette, all those kinds of things are being done in real time. So we're going to let that finish up, and then we're going to go ahead and take a look at what else we can do. And after a few moments, this is now our starting point. And unlike a lot of other tools out there that claim to use AI to create your pages, you still now have full control over every aspect of this. This is just your initial starting point. And we can even refine this before we get our hands dirty, customizing any aspects of it. So let's take a look at the right hand side and see what options we have now to refine the look and feel of this. So first of all, you've got your palettes. You can choose different color palettes and you'll see that will immediately update that color palette based upon what you choose. So if you want to have one overall tone, you can see we can choose that. And if we click it a second time, it'll start to shuffle based upon that color palette. So you're not restricted to just the one palette. You can refine this, tweak it and adjust it until you find exactly what you like the look of. So for example, I'm going to say I like the look of this color scheme. And if we scroll on through, you can see everywhere has picked up that continuity of color scheme. Now, let's just say I don't particularly like these fonts. Well, I could easily change those as well. If we scroll up a little bit, you can see there's our display fonts. And this kind of ties into the heading sections here, heading one through six if they're used in the design. So by changing these, you see only the headings will update based upon our choice. So we can easily customize the look of this using these options. So let's say I quite like the look of this. It's quite modern, fresh, and funky. And let's just say now I want to scroll underneath, and there's my text fonts. And this is what's going to kind of focus on the body content. So if we scroll in a little bit, you can see where we have this body content. I can change that, and now that will pick up that change of font typography. So we can choose whatever we want from here. And we can still refine this by just selecting any element and customizing it. So there we now have our starting point. Again, like I say, everything is set up with those three breakpoints in mind. So we've got our mobile, a tablet, and our desktop. And if we select anything, we can go ahead and we can customize it. So we can just double click inside there and start editing it. We can select it and change anything to do with the typography and so on on the right hand side, apply links to it and so on. But you'll notice we also get this little sort of AI icon. So we say capture, share and showcase your art. We can click on that and then the AI will only apply to that particular frame. So we select it that will then go ahead and rewrite based upon what we've kind of set up inside our prompt. So you can see now this has changed things over. So collect, distribute, and exhibit your creativity, which is a little bit more in keeping to the kind of content we used inside the actual prompt for this. And again, same kind of kinds of goes. We can select any of these and we can click on the AI. We can be really specific, just this one specific little section of text, hit the AI, or we can select the entire area and click AI on there. And you can see now that will customize various different aspects of this. 
all nice and simple. So if you're coming from something like, you know, sort of Webflow, a lot of this is going to feel very familiar. Yes, it's somewhat limited in comparison to what you can do with a tool like WordPress, but I don't really kind of see these as being on the same level. They're very different tools that just happen to actually output web design kind of websites and so on. So now we've created this, we've got our starting point and we can customize all of this if you want to remove sections, add sections and so on. You can see at the moment we don't have any navigation so we want to probably address that. Well you can come over and you've got these options for insert, layout, text, CMS and actions. So we can do insert for example, we can go ahead and insert entire sections, we can insert navigation, we can insert additional pages, there's also collection lists which is part of the CMS or content management system and content fields and so on. Again, like I say, if you'd like me to cover this in a little bit more detail, let me know in the comment section below. I'm kind of really interested in what Framer provides. I wouldn't say I would use it in place of WordPress, but I think if you're creating a landing page or simple sites that don't need all that kind of functionality you have inside a tool like WordPress, maybe Framer is a really solid option. Use the AI or don't use the AI. I think the no code side of things is kind of intriguing. And we'll take a look at how good or bad this is when we do some tests to see how it factors in the speed side of things. So let's say we want to add in a navigation. We'll say, I like the look of this dark one. We'll select it. That now inserts it, sadly, in the wrong place, but we can simply go ahead and just drag this into position where we want it. So we'll pop that at the top of our design. And you'll notice that once we do that, all of the different responsive layouts will have that inserted and include in things like the mobile responsive navigation. So we're only having to insert this once, and these are basically components. So we can double click and we can go in and we can take a look at editing this component. So again, you can see we've got our desktop component, We've got our tablet component and we've got our mobile or phone component, including the open and the closed state. And all you need to do is simply click on what you want. So for example, we might want this about, we might want to change that to home, for example. Once you've done that, you can then come up to the top, choose to click a link and you can say what you want this to go to. So we'll say home style is a link and you can customize the style of these and do all manner of different things. So it's a little bit like Figma kind of compressed into a sort of no code or zero code web design platform, you can kind of spit this content out, create the HTML and so on behind the scenes for you. But you can see we've updated that component, we can jump back now into our page and you'll see that's updated, the home has now become a link and it'll go to, in this example, the home page. And if you look at the left hand side, you can see things have broken down in the same way you would with Figma. So the hero section, for example, inside the content, you've got an image, so if you want to, sorry, an icon, so if you want to apply an image to this, you can apply images to it. So you can select, for example, the hero section, and then you've got all the controls over on the right hand side to apply effects and accessibility options and code overrides and even grab the handoff CSS code should you want that. You can see there's all the CSS code so you can manually edit this if you want to as well. Some pretty cool options inside here. You can scroll to different sections if you want to put sort of anchor text into your navigation. You know, all the things that you're probably used to having inside you are basically all inside you. So let's just say we're happy with the look of this. We can click on publish. And because we've got the free account, you can see we get basically a framer.ai domain. If you go for one of the paid accounts, like I say, starting from as little as four pounds per month, you can then get your own domain and associate it with that. But let's just say we're happy with this and we're just going to say web app photo. It doesn't really matter too much as long as that's available. We'll click on publish. Providing that is available, you can see that now gives us the web app photo.framer.ai. If we click to open that up, there's our page. Everything that we've just done inside there, all listed. We now have our full page. Now, obviously, you're going to get this made with Framer in the caller because it's a free kind of a sort of setup, but at least it gives you the opportunity to be able to test this and check it out. Your home button, all those kinds of things are here for you. So, pretty cool that we've got all those now. Let's just say you make some changes. So let's just select this again. We hit that AI. We let that come up with something completely different. And now let's go up and say we want to change the color scheme of this. Let's just say shuffle. And we've now got a slightly different variation. And all we need to do now is go ahead, click on publish one more time. And what will happen is it'll tell you what changes have taken place underneath. So you can see at the moment there's one change. Hit update on there. It'll take a second or so that we can go ahead, we can check this out so we can go and take a look at our link. There's our updated version and you know, it is very, very simple. Now, like I say, I'm really just scratching the sort of tip here to sort of show you what you can do with the basics of AI. 
Now we've got this though, let's go ahead and see how it fares when we take a look at some speed tests. So let's just try GT metrics. So once we're inside GT metrics, let's go ahead and paste that in. Now I don't know where this server is based, but I'm basing this based upon me being in the UK in London. So let's go ahead and analyze this and see what kind of result we get back with it. And what we're at, let's go ahead and try taking a look at something like the Google page speed scores. We'll do the same here. We'll go ahead and we'll pop that same link inside there and click on analyze. So coming back over into GT metrics, you can see this is the score that I'm getting, which I think you'll agree is pretty respectable. Okay, the site or the page isn't that heavy graphically, but the fact that we're on the free account and we're using hosting that we have no control over, I think this is a pretty solid starting point. If you scroll underneath, you can see we've got no real sort of problem issues here. If we scroll a little bit further, you can see the images are the biggest loading factor anyway, so we can refine and optimize the images if we start to add more inside there. So I would say that's a pretty respectable starting point. If we hop over to PageSpeed Insights, you can see we're looking at the mobile version, and with no optimization from my side of things, we're hitting 95 on the performance on mobile, and if we hop to desktop, we're hitting 100 performance on there. So I think it's pretty safe to say it's working pretty well. Now, like I say, this is really just scratching the surface of what you can do when you start to add in your own CMS sections if you want to blog and all those kinds of cool things. But I think for the zero code, this is a really solid starting point, and I can only see this getting better as it moves forward. We still have full control over editing every aspect, but I think you can see it's relatively easy to get started with. It gives good solid speed results on mobile and desktop. Not necessarily the easiest thing to get, all inside a nice, pretty useful and intuitive interface. But as always, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you like the idea of a zero code kind of tool like Framer? Would you use something like this for maybe a blog or for a basic CMS website? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.